Hi everybody, let's talk energy level diagrams. This video hopefully will talk you through some of the helpful hints and things you need to keep in mind when doing an energy level diagram and then I'm also going to talk you through an example. All right. So when you're doing an energy level diagram like it says here at the top, it's just another way to actually communicate about the electrons that are present on any atom present on the periodic table. All right. However, this diagram talks to you and it actually illustrates to the viewer the amount of energy that's present in all the electrons that make up that particular atom. Okay. So how do we do an energy level diagram in the first place? Okay, Here's a little bit more about how they work. First, for any element that you're actually going to do an energy level diagram for, you need to create or you need to do the longhand electron configuration for the element you're working with. Yes, the shorthand ones are definitely shorter, but they don't work nearly as easily um, for creating your energy level diagram. So make sure you know how to do the longhand electron configurations first. And if you need help with that, um, you can watch my video, Let's Talk Electron Configurations. Right? But once you have the longhand electron configuration for the element that you need to do the energy level diagram first, here are some things that you want to keep in mind. Okay. In your energy level diagram, you're going to represent every single electron for that particular atom by an arrow. So the arrow can either go up or down. All right. Um, so this should be a space where there's a down arrow that's actually written in there. Um, so we can, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of draw one in there. All right. Um, but you can have down arrows or up arrows. All right. Um, there can be no more than two electrons in one area, and those areas within a sublevel are represented by lines. So no more than two electrons per line. All right. On each line, one arrow is going to go up and one arrow is going to go down. All right. That actually represents that they are spinning in opposite directions because electrons have negative charges. And if you bring two of them together, they would repel and not fit in the space that you actually need. So by having one go in one direction and one go in the other direction, you kind of eliminate that repulsion or at least communicate to your viewer that that is actually happening. Right. And then um, each sublevel or orbital has a certain number of places where you can find electrons. Those are all represented by lines. OK, so to give you a visual for that, um, the orbital S has one line, P has three lines, D has five lines. I have not included F in this particular video because we do not require our students to know F. But if you are required to know F, F would have seven lines. OK, um, the arrows when you put them into these arrow or these areas um, when there is more than one line for a particular area so like p and d it says s and d um, but that should be p and d okay you want to spread your arrows out as far as possible first okay and then go ahead and actually fill them back in the second time and i will show you what i mean by this when we go through the example okay again this region right here, okay, should be P and D. I'm going to write over that, all right, rather than S and D, okay. And then the diagram always starts at the bottom, right? That is going to represent our region of low energy, and we move up in our energy level diagram to a region of higher energy, all right? So what does it look like if we were going to do an example? All right, um, we're going to do an example for element 16, which is sulfur on the periodic table. So step one, I told you, is that you need to create the longhand electron configuration for sulfur. All right, and so I have given it to you here. All right, and the longhand electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. OK, um, so oftentimes, although not always, on the left hand side of your energy level diagram, you might see an arrow. All right. If you do, that is normally corresponding to the idea 
that you would have it's awful there we go let's try and see if we can make that better all right um an increasing amount of energy from the beginning of your energy level diagram to the end all right okay so we use the electron configuration to help us build the energy level diagram all right the first kind of grouping of three pieces of information say 1s2 so the one tells us that we are on the first energy level that is the lowest energy level it's also the first energy level that we have on our periodic table and then right next to it we're going to write the sub level where those electrons can be found which is s s would tell us that right above it we need to draw one line so there's basically one space where we could find electrons in s so we're going to draw that line and then the last piece of information that is in this configuration is the two and the two still tells us that there are two electrons that are present in that particular sublevel or orbital but here it tells us that we need to draw two arrows all right so we are going to draw one up arrow and one down arrow all right and so that is one s and there are two electrons on it so we're pretty much done with that part so we're going to go on now we're done with the first energy level the second energy level so it's a little bit higher all right so we're going to do 2s increasing in the amount of energy that we have again s is one line or one place where the electrons can be and again it would tell us that there are two electrons in this area so we are going to draw in our electrons as arrows and because there's two in this space i'm going to make one of those arrows an up arrow and the other one is going to be a down arrow and now we have 1s2 2s2 so that much of our electron configuration is done 2p6 is the next part okay in some um images of an energy level diagram you would see 2p out here still on the second energy level but with a little bit more um, energy than what the electrons that are traveling in s would be and so um, because they continuously kind of move out like this it sometimes takes a lot of paper all right and so in order to kind of conserve that we tell our students to just put it right above the 2s all right so here might be a place where you have to clarify with your teacher which way he or she would like you to do it okay but either way 2p kind of actually comes next whether you're going to write it right above or you're going to write it out here to the side okay so which kind of tells you same energy level okay they're both in the second energy level but p has a little bit more energy than what s does okay either way all right after you get the 2p in p has three lines representing three different places within that sublevel or orbital where our electrons can be so we're going to draw those lines in all right and here it tells you that there are six electrons total all right so when we go to put them in like i said all right you spread them out first as much as you possibly can okay in this day and age all right and this video is being made in 2021 all right it's kind of like social distancing okay to spread your electrons out as far as possible just like we can have to spread our people out as far as possible then once we can't spread people out anymore okay we have to put then we go in and we still try and keep people as separate as possible but we have limited room to do so so electrons four five and six are going to fill in 
right after elements or right after electrons. Okay, one, two, and three. All right, so electrons one, two, three space out, and then electrons four, five, six go back and space out as well to fill in the spaces where electrons could be present in those three places within the p sublevel. All right, so that takes care of 2p6. 3s2 is next, it's the third energy level. All right, and I'm going to move out a little bit just so that I don't run into my problem. All right, and I'm indicating that there's still more energy in the third energy level compared to the first and second. We're back to S, so it's only one line. It tells me that I've got two electrons present in there, so I'm going one up, arrow representing one electron and one down arrow representing the other one All right and that section is done and then all right i have 3p4 it's my very last one All right 3p would normally be sitting right up here but so that it doesn't kind of impede the um, instructions that i've given you i'm going to draw it right next to it that 3p again p has three different lines all right that are up there according to the directions they gave you under the helpful hint section for a drawing or energy level diagram and this time it tells me that there are four electrons present in this particular area all right so i am going to spread them out as much as I possibly can. So I've got one electron, two electrons, three electrons. And now that I have one electron in each of the areas that the electrons can be traveling in the p orbital, right? But I still have one more electron I need to put in. I'm going to put in that final arrow right here. Okay, so now how do I actually check that my diagram makes sense? Okay, I count the arrows. So one, two, three, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right, so 16 arrows representing electrons would also mean that they're equal to the number of protons that are in the periodic table, and the atomic number for sulfur on the periodic table is 16. Okay, so if you were given the element and you needed to draw the energy level diagram, this is the way you would do it for sulfur. The other way that you might be asked um, in an assessment to be able to measure your understanding about energy level diagrams is that we could give you um, or you could be given an energy level diagram and be asked what element is being represented by the energy level diagram. And the way that you basically figure that out, okay, is that you count the arrows because every arrow is equal to an electron. And so in this case, there would be 16 arrows representing those electrons. And then you go and look up um, what element belongs to that number of electrons, because it's also equal to the number of protons or the atomic number for that particular element, right? So hopefully this video helped you. Thanks so much for stopping by.